Yes, I mean, exactly. You know, before you start uh, using something for policy making, you first have to define it, and second, you have to measure it. And for something like sub subjective well being or well being more generally, uh, it can be a bit tricky. So the report, in the report, we do say that we can actually measure subjective well-being and we can actually define it. And so the way we define it is essentially by saying, well, the best way to do it is to ask people how satisfied they are with their lives. And in fact, when you take this as the core um, um, question that you will ask people, then in fact you find that uh, people do answer and answer well this question, that there is a lot of validity, as we say, in their answers. And you can actually um, implement in statistical surveys these sort of questions. And at the end of the day, this is can be uh, very informative. It provides a lot of information for policy making. But along with those measures of life satisfaction, it's also important to ask supplementary measures, and we recommend that um, those are questions are also uh, added into the panoply for measuring well-being. And those are more related to questions about experience well-being. Like, you know, you can evaluate your life, and that's what life satisfaction question does, but how did you feel about uh, being happy or stressed or anger yesterday is also questions that are interesting and would be helpful for different types of, of policies. And finally, there is a more fundamental question that is even more tricky, but is about how worthwhile is your life? Is there a purpose in your life? And you can see that those three types of questions and hence measures will provide different answers to different areas of, of policies. And that's what we, we talk about in the report. And then this then, um, is used in the, uh, in the analysis that is provided in the report. Yes, in fact, that's quite interesting because, uh, you know, about when we started the whole debate about um, measuring well-being and understanding better what drives well-being, there were about I would say a couple of countries that were actually collecting uh, measures of well-being. Now, I would say we are, in two years' time, I would say the majority of OECD countries will be collecting the data. Uh, they still consider uh, these uh, statistics as uh, what official statistical uh, systems call uh, experimental uh, and not totally official. Uh, and that's, that's okay, because it's true that it is new, it's a new domain, so you have to experiment uh, more and to make sure that they are very valid and can be used, can, can be used to, uh, for evidence-based policy making. But I think we've made a lot of progress um, across OECD countries and more and more national statistical offices are implementing these questions on uh, how satisfied are you with your life, how is your life uh, pur purposeful, or so on in the in their traditional surveys.